Hey everybody, Dr. Jen here. We've all been holed up in our little homes for a while now, so I thought it might be fun to share about a few animals that are also tucked away in their hidey holes. Since moving to the desert, I've seen lots of different types of holes. I've seen small holes, I've seen crooked holes, I've seen some pretty darn big holes, and I've seen holes in the sides of hills, I've seen holes inside a cactus, just basically lots of different types of holes. And I started wondering, well, who's in that hole? It turns out figuring out who's in that hole is a little bit trickier than it might seem. There are a few approaches to sorting this out, but there's definitely one way you should not go about trying to figure out who's in that hole. Don't put your finger, or really any other body part, in that hole. So, since we're not gonna put our fingers in the hole, how can we go about investigating who lives in a hole? Well, I'm a scientist, and whenever I wanna investigate something, the first thing I do is look for some evidence. As you can imagine, the best place to look for evidence is right outside the hole. So what kind of evidence do we see outside of a hole? Well, sometimes we see little footprints, sometimes we find scat. Scat's just a fancy word for poop. And sometimes we even find some pretty clear evidence. Because I saw this skin sitting outside of this hole in March, right about when rattlesnakes were coming out of hibernation here in the Sonoran Desert, I'm making a pretty strong guess that a rattlesnake was living in that hole. That's another good reminder of why you don't want to stick your finger in a hole. Beyond what's on the outside of the hole, there's this nifty little book that I found called The Field Guide to Desert Holes. Who knew? It turns out it has all these descriptions of different types of holes that you're likely to find here in the Snorn Desert. And then it goes a step further and tells us what's probably in that hole. How does it do this? Well, sometimes you can tell who's in that hole by the size and shape of the hole and some other distinguishing features. For example, to me, this hole looks like a badger hole. How can I tell? Well, for starters, badgers make pretty darn big holes. And when I look it up in my handy dandy field guide to desert holes, it turns out it's a pretty good match. What about this hole? When I spotted this beautiful, perfectly round, symmetrical hole decorated with twigs all the way around, my first thought was, this has to be a spider. My second thought was that this was probably a tarantula's hole. I saw something scurry away pretty quick, but I didn't get a good look at it. When I looked up the description in my handy dandy field guide to desert holes, I was wrong. It turns out that tarantula holes and wolf spider holes look pretty similar, but the distinguishing feature is the decoration of the little twigs, followed by some silk. So wait a minute. Where's the silk? I guess the first time I spotted it, it had only gotten around to the twig stage. As you can see, it's now moved into the silk stage. But not to be deterred, I did in fact find a tarantula hole. Now, how do I know for sure? Well, this is where being caught on tape is what helps you also determine who's living in that hole. I'm gonna come back to the tarantula in a second, but first I wanna look at who might be in this type of hole. Now, I'm pretty sure because of the little footprints and the little bit of poop that this belongs to a ground squirrel. But we have two types of ground squirrels here. We have antelope ground squirrels and we also have round tail ground squirrels. So how can I know which one is in that hole? Based on the shape, I was deciding that it was a round tail ground squirrel. And indeed, when I cut him on tape, it turns out I was right. Wait, hold on. What's that lizard doing outside the hole? Oh yeah, it turns out sometimes other critters squat in someone else's hole. So back to that tarantula hole that I might have found. In this case, I was pretty lucky because I was able to sneak up on whoever was living in that hole and catch them on tape. If you look real close, you'll see the furry legs wrapped up real tight. 
I know this physical distancing thing and being cooped up at home is really hard for all of us. Most of the animals that I've talked about today spend the majority of their lives tucked in their little hidey holes. Just ask this tarantula or this Gila woodpecker. As for these prairie dogs, they spend up to a third of their life down underground in the safety of their burrows. And just like they emerge when it's safe, so will we. Thanks for watching.